Next up is the CDA, which stands for Custom Distribution Amplifier. So this is the lineup we have as of now. We already had the CDA 16 available. I will give a small refresh, but totally new are the CDA 4D and the CDA 2 HD. So you see the numbers are corresponding with the amount of channels they have, but especially with the 4D and the 2 HD, you are really flexible how to use those channels. First start with the CDA 16. So this is a 16 channel, eight zone stereo amplifier in a 2U chassis, which can reach 100 watts per channel or even 200 watts in a bridge mode. It has a global RCA input. So if you connect that one, you can use one source and output it to all the speakers. For powering on and off, you can have an always on, an auto detect or a 12 volt trigger you can use. And the nice thing is that the amplifier is cooled from right to left you are able to stack the amplifiers on top of each other if you have lack of space. The rack ears are included. By default, you can mount this in a nice 19 inch rack to have a clean custom install project. Here you see some example systems. So in this case, we use separate sources like an EOS link or formation audio, which you can connect to this amp. There you do the volume control and then you use this as a power amplifier per zone. The nice thing to note is that you have a gain control at the back of the unit to limit the output if needed. If you use this in a bridge mode, so then you have to put all the switches on to have more power. So if you use a powerful speaker, you can use bridge mode. Of course, you are not able to connect 16, but only eight speakers, but you have more power running to those speakers. This is a sort of a mix. Some cases, if you use an AVR like a Denon or a Marantz, they don't have the amplification for all channels. And then you are able to use this one for driving your four Atmos channels in your ceiling. Yeah, as a multi-room solution. So you're really flexible how you use those channels. In this case, we want to have one input controlling all the other zones. Therefore, you have a link to global input switches at the back of the device to be able to only connect one source to the amplifier. The CDA4, this is the totally new amplifier, which is really flexible in configuration. As you see in the front, there are no buttons, not at the front, but also not at the back, only a power switch. So installation is done via a web interface, which I yeah, will do a live walkthrough later in this webinar. There are also three power modes, so you can have it always on, out of tech or, or 12 volt, just like the CDA 16. And in this case, we also have a nice one U uh, rack install, so it doesn't eat up a lot of space within your rack. Also new is that we have a Bowser Wilkins ecosystem, so we can connect amplifiers via an uh, AVB bridging. And the only thing you need to do is connect the amps to a special AVB switch, so they will be able to communicate together and have one source connected to one amplifier be, um, let's say, outputted by the other amplifier, which is extremely helpful in a nice multi-room system. Other thing, great thing is, is that we have engineered and make presets for all Bowser Wilkins CI speakers. So you will see this in the walkthrough of the interface. It's easy as selecting via drop down menu which speaker you want to use or even which subwoofer you want to use. And the parameters and crossovers are set automatically. Last but not least, we already have a basic Control 4 and Crestron uh, Simple and Crestron Home Driver available on our website to be able to integrate this within a third-party control system. So if you look at the details, mainly the CDA4D is replacing the SA250. It's much more flexible and you have a lot of more possibilities because it's a full DSP amp you can set up via the web interface. So for the first time, we were able to use dynamic EQ in our install subwoofer lineup, which came from our DB subwoofer, which you might, uh, might know. Make sure that also on lower volumes, you have a nice bass response inside your room. But that's not it. So we, we can drive up to two subwoofers independently with one CDA 4D. So in principle, it's two times 250, but we can do much more. So here you see some example systems. We can use this as a distribution amplifier, simply connecting four speakers. This can be one zone or four speakers, but also two separate zones. For stereo, you're flexible how to set this up. We can run up to two subwoofers in BTL mode, so we can bridge two channels into one channel of 250 watts. Nice thing is that you can do this totally separate and even have one bridge channel running an ISW4 and one channel running an ISW6, for instance. So it doesn't have to be the same subwoofer. 
Also, a very nice feature is that we can do a mix. So we can do a 2.1 system. So we can set up two speakers on output one and two and bridge tide load channel three and four to be used for a subwoofer. Again, we can set this up very easy in the new web interface, which I show later. Lastly, we have a very powerful new CDA2 HD. Again, a very flexible two-channel amplifier. It's a two times 500 watt or a one times 1000 watt in bridge mode. Again, we can use the same web interface, which has a lot of similarities comparing to the CDA4D to be able to set it up just the way we want. Also, this amplifier has AVB built in, so we can we are able to bridge the CDA4 to a CDA2 or vice versa. So we're really flexible using this amp also as a distribution amplifier. It has analog and RCA of analog RCA inputs and also digital coax inputs, the same kind for the CDA4. It's a half rack width uh, wide, two U high. So you see in this picture, we uh, have very clever mounting brackets included in the box where we can say, okay, we only have one unit and we want to mount it inside a 19 inch rack, or we can even attach two CDA2s together. There are some brackets inside the box and we simply turn the mounting brackets the other way around and we are able to install two in only a two U UI. So this is a really nice thing. Also here we have Control 4 and Creston uh, integration already. Where can you use the CDA2 for? So uh, mainly it's for powering our new ISW8, which I already uh, coped in this uh, in this webinar, but also the current CT subwoofers we have. So the CT SW10, 12, 15, and even later on, that will be available in May, um, the CT8 SW. But like I already said, it's not only a subwoofer amplifier, we can also use this as a distribution amplifier, let's say a stereo power amplifier and all the presets for the bigger CI and CT speakers are also in the web interface of the CDA2 HD. So same principle as the lighter version, simply select the speaker you want to drive and the rest is automatically set. Here are some uh, some use cases so we can drive uh, CT subs, the ISW8, but also a CT 7.4 subwoofer. And later on, we will even get support for our CT800 series. Also, the update will be available in May. Then a very cool feature is that it can have the functionality as the old CT8XO. So the, the analog crossover we had for our CT800 series that we don't need anymore when this update is available. So we can use one channel to drive the high frequency and mid frequency and the other channel to drive the low frequency of, in this case, the CT8LR speaker. So crossover is done inside the CDA2. So you don't have to worry about yeah, setting that with analog knobs like you did with the old crossover we had available. So very cool new feature. It's expected to be available around May. So then the total CT8 system will also be inside the system. Check out more videos below and support our channel by hitting the like button. If you want any of our latest videos, please remember to subscribe and check the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever our new content is released. Please leave any thoughts or questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching.